Hi, my name is Paul Davis, and here's 10 songs from Easy to Why Did I Even Try Doing It? that had a great impact on my playing. We all have our journey, our path that shapes us as guitar players, and there's a lot that you can tell about a player by just looking at their inspiration. So, starting out with number one, here's my journey. Unlike probably many of you, I got my first acoustic after a few years of playing electric. Why? I probably needed it for campfire purposes. At the time I thought acoustic was just a less cool electric, but boy, was I wrong. One of the first songs I tried was this song. Yeah, I know it's written by Nine Inch Nails, but this is the rendition by Johnny Cash. The song Hurt. It features a lot of open chords, perfect for a beginner to start out with. It's a brilliant song, so why not play it? So after you learn the open chords, you find out that there are so many awesome things that you can do with just those same basic chords. And that is exactly what I learned from John Frusciante playing the song number two on this list, Slow Cheetah. It's just everyone's first guitar lesson, I mean E minor, G, A minor and C, but then turn into actual great picking piece. So this was also probably my introduction to finger picking and maybe even the first time I played with a capo. Unlike you, because you probably played Wonderwall at first. <laughs> anyway, here we go. I remember hearing this song when I was a kid and it still haunts me at night. Not because it got such an eerie feel, but because I tried it before I could actually finger pick decently. Number three is, Is There Anybody Out There? by Pink Floyd. So when that didn't work out, the finger picking part, I played it with a pick on a nylon string guitar. Yes, I know, blasphemy. I didn't know, I didn't care. I still don't care, but now I can think I can finally put it off with my fingers. Here we go. Next up at number four, one of the first bluesy songs I played. Nobody knows you when you're down and out. And what I'm playing is based on Eric Clapton's live version. A great chord progression with some spicy things I hadn't heard before. The diminished chord, the dominant seventh chord, the secondary dominant, chromatic lines. It's all packed with goodness and not super difficult. A wonderful piece that also lends itself beautifully for some sweet, good old embellishments. Let's go!
So at this point, I could play, let's say, 10 Beatles songs. McCartney and Harrison both wrote wonderful pieces for the guitar, and that's why I made a full video about this song already. This has to be my favorite. Learning about ways to incorporate little melodies in between the strumming and all the little nuances of this piece, just, just brilliant. Coming in at the hot number five, here is Here Comes the Sun. Okay, this next piece is just too beautiful and very difficult for a lot of folks because of the crazy chord shapes going on. And number six is Shape of My Heart by Sting, written by Dominic Miller and Sting. This song has such astonishing chord voicings and inversions, overall beautiful chord progressions for a guitar, and some of these chord shapes can feel impossible when you're playing for the first time, like... What? Those stretches are just are pretty crazy, but the reward is huge. Let's go. Yes, 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 at number seven there we finally are, John Mayer. And before the haters pop in the comments saying Mayer didn't invent the percussive slap, yes, I know. But this is my list, so hands off my list. You know what, if you can think of a better list, or your own list I should say, just leave them in the comments. It's fun to see for everyone, I guess. So John Mayer's unique guitar technique can be hard to get down, but it doesn't really compare to the mental chord shape in this verse. I remember getting the, to know this piece and I was studying at the conservatory so I showed it to one of my teachers asking how on earth he plays that low G. We both didn't know. So it took me quite some time to accept that he actually plays it the way, well, you'll see right now. The song is at number seven, Stop This Train. I never was a profound finger picking. I could do some things, sure, but I, was, I wasn't a virtuoso by any means. It's still not my forte, but I just, I love it so much. So getting to know some of these classic blues fingerstyle songs was just an enormous eye-opener for me. At number eight, it's Deep River Blues, written and performed by Doc Watson from North Carolina. All these lovely patterns you'll learn, the alternating thumb, the Travis picking, the chord shapes, the dim chords in between, the melodies walking elegantly while at the same time these blues harmony give a solid foundation. It's really, it's great to be able to play like this. Challenging for sure, but very great. Talking about eye-openers, it was actually when I was looking into a new guitar, this very guitar, I saw this guy Julian Lage playing this model, the Collings OM, and he plays something that will be ingrained in my memory forever. So beautiful. 
so peaceful, so graceful and so refined. And the composition, so lovely. It's probably one of the easier pieces. That's the only reason I can actually try to play the song. But getting it down the way he does, man, that's just another challenge on its own. At number nine, it's Day and Age. go to number 10 I quickly wanted to share that if just playing songs isn't enough for you and you want to know the why and the how of playing guitar, seeing connections and build your own knowledge from the ground up with a solid foundation, I made two courses that could definitely help you out. If you're a beginner check out the course Learn, Practice, Play. If you're more intermediate check out Next Level Playing. And the first one is mostly based on playing the acoustic and the second course is focused more on electrical guitar but both are so much fun, I put my heart and soul into them. So please check them out if you wish. So let's continue. We could definitely conclude this list with artists like Tommy Emanuel, Merle Travis, Chet Atkins, or one of the other great guitar gods we've got. But for me, number 10 is more a personal one. So maybe this piece isn't technically the most difficult. It still feels like it is to me. It's Never Going Back Again by Fleetwood Mac, played by Lindsay. Buckingham. I made a video about his piece Big Love and why it is so difficult to play but to be honest I had to put more effort in getting this piece down than that song. <laughs> There's some polyrhythmic or even polymeters going on. It's like the thumb is playing patterns of two and the fingers are playing three note patterns over it. It's very cool, it's very strange. Check it out. I made the same video for electric guitar, so if you're interested in that, check out this video. And again, share your list, it's definitely fun to draw some inspiration from that. Thank you so much for watching, have a lovely day everyone, and I'll catch you guys next week. Goodbye.